The number one mistake when identifying cervical vertigo is assuming that dizziness means an inner ear problem without evaluating the neck. That single assumption delays correct diagnosis for thousands of people. I recently treated a patient for almost a year suffered severe dizziness with bending forward, with rotating their neck, and they couldn't sleep on the left side. This patient told me their story. They said they went to an exercise class last year, feeling pretty fine. Then they did a bunch of exercises, which put a little bit of stress and strain on her neck, and she noticed afterwards she got dizzy. The dizziness started to subside to some degree, so about a day or so later, she went to another exercise class. This time, she's doing abdominal work while lifting her head off of a mat and not supporting her head. Now she's getting really dizzy. At this point, it's becoming a serious problem. She went to specialist after specialist, had imaging done, the imaging looked okay, there wasn't an acute ear infection, vestibular tests were negative, negative for BPPV. Now she has this unexplained dizziness. What she never received, not once, was someone examining her cervical spine. Her symptoms weren't mysterious, her symptoms were cervical. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Physio Tips with Mauro. I'm Mauro. I've been specializing in cervicogenic dizziness for over 24 years, and I've seen this exact case thousands of times. I've already made several videos on how to tell if your dizziness is cervical related and videos on exercises to help. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. This video is about the mistake that keeps people chasing the wrong diagnosis, even when the neck is the source. Here's the loop that I see over and over. Symptoms begin, patient goes to a specialist, tests come back negative, symptoms persist, diagnosis becomes confusing, patient suffers for months and months, if not years, and then cervical spine is never examined. The loop becomes the problem. So we've talked about the number one mistake when identifying cervical vertigo, but briefly, I just want to take a few seconds to describe what cervical vertigo is in case you're new to the channel. Cervical vertigo essentially comes from pain in the neck. You have seven neck vertebra. The top two or three vertebra are rich with nerve receptors called proprioceptors. These are nerve receptors that send information to the brain on where your head's at in space. It's a very important piece of information for you to feel balanced and not have dizziness. So any tension or tightness or weakness in the neck could cause pain and discomfort, and that could easily disrupt those proprioceptors and lead to a confusing signal to the brain resulting in dizziness. If you would like to dive deeper and you want more tips, tricks, and daily strategies on how to defeat cervicogenic dizziness, check out my new book, Cervicogenic Dizziness Relief, a complete guide to a dizzy free life. This book was made specifically for you, the viewers, to have a resource with all this information in one single spot. I'll leave the link below, and now let's get back to the video. Cervical involvement is more likely when your dizziness is associated with neck pain, headaches, awkward posture, maybe you've had an injury, maybe you've just worked at a desk for 40 years with really bad forward head posture. If you have these obvious signs and symptoms of a neck problem and you have dizziness, that becomes a very important clue as we're trying to vet this out. Now I'm going to teach you three easy screening techniques that you can do at home while watching this video that might give you a clue if your dizziness and your neck problem are actually one and the same. The first test we're going to do, I'm going to use a rolly stool, something that can spin, and this is how it's going to go. If you look to the right, and you notice that it's dizzy or that the background starts to move awkwardly versus looking to the left and now everything feels fine. I'm just using this as an example to the right side. It could be the left, etc. If that's you, here's a test that you could do. If it's cervical, when your neck rotates, it puts stress into these upper joints and that can trigger dizziness and headache. So what you do is you keep your head still but rotate your torso to the left. Guess what, it's still putting tension on my neck. So if you do that and then you come back and you notice that the room continued to look weird or move in the background or you felt some type of dizziness, that's a sign that your cervical spine could be involved. If it's an inner ear problem, you actually never moved your head. So it shouldn't have disturbed your vestibular system, but it did put pressure on your neck. 
easy test that you can try at home to see if your neck might be triggering some of this dizziness. Another thing that you can do is slowly bring your head into a forward posture and then leave it for 30 or 40 seconds. If you notice this starts to bother you or create dizziness, again, your vestibular system is stable, but there is an awkward pressure on your neck. Both of those are ideas that you could do to, to provoke the neck to see if that causes your symptoms. Here's another test that you could do. If you notice, for example, turning to the right creates dizziness or makes the background look like it's moving, here's what you can do. You take one of your fingers, you put it on the base of your skull, right at the bottom of the base of your skull, right, right where your first vertebra is. You kind of hold it gently so you're stabilizing it. While you stabilize it, then you rotate to the right and gently keep it stable while you come back. If you notice after doing that that your symptoms were reduced or even made worse, if you can make it worse or make it better, then guess what? You're probably close to the right tissue. My patient that I mentioned in the earlier story, when they turned, they got dizzy. And so what I did was I held that place. I say it stabilized the upper neck and I had them rotate and immediately they had less dizziness. That is a great, easy, quick test that you can do. And not only is it a great test, but that could easily turn into treatment. Now let's look at the third test. The third screening tool that you can do is if you look up and you get dizzy, sometimes what you could do if you notice it's sore on the right side or maybe the left, is you gently run your fingers down the base of your skull, stabilize the upper neck a little bit gently, hold the upper neck in place, and then tilt back as far as you can comfortably and back. You're looking to see if you change the dizziness. Did it feel better? Did it feel worse? If you stabilize the upper neck and you notice an immediate decrease in dizziness, probably what we're looking at is a cervical instability. By cervical instability, I mean that the muscles that would inherently contract to stabilize the joints of the neck are become weaker. This will happen if you've had pain for a while. And now what's happening is when you're going up, the vertebra could be slipping too far that triggers discomfort into the upper neck. That's going to trigger dizziness or headache. So the three assessments that we looked at, these screening techniques, by themselves, they don't 100% conclude that you might have cervical vertigo. But it's a great piece of information to add to a much bigger analysis. So if you find that you do have symptoms of cervical pain, you do have dizziness, at this point, now what this is saying is that we need a thorough cervical, sp cervical spine evaluation. We need a trained professional, the doctor, a trained physical therapist, maybe somebody who's trained in manual therapy to examine your cervical range of motion, the tenderness to touch at your upper cervical joints. We need to test the strength of the cervical spine. We need to test your position sense awareness. That would warrant that next step. That also proves that just thinking that dizziness can only be vestibular is the number one mistake. If you wanna go deeper, I've linked two videos in the description of this video. One that helps distinguish if you might have cervical involvement in your dizziness and one that gives you treatment strategies. So this video gives you clarity and those videos give you direction. Well, thanks for watching today's video. And if you got anything out of it, do me a big favor, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss a new episode. Well, it's goodbye for now, and we'll see you next time on Physio Tips tomorrow.